Today's program, we're going to go back and tie together a lot of things that we've looked at and have somewhat of a review of going from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. But before we do that, we're going to cover the issue that is called in Hebrew Teshuva, or the season of repentance or return. In the Jewish year, we have Tishrei is our seventh month. in the religious calendar. Now, the 11th, uh, excuse me, the sixth month is going to be called Elul. Seventh month in the first day is Rosh Hashanah. The seventh month in the tenth day is Yom Kippur. Let's put an RHS here, and let's put a YK, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Now remember that each one of these festivals is an appointment that the Messiah will keep. And that is a key to understanding what is being communicated by God. We're going to have a 40-day season beginning with the first day of Elul and going all the way to the 10th day of Tishrei. So we have 30 days in Elul and then 10 days here in Tishrei. Now, what does Teshuva mean? It means repentance or return. I'd like for you to look at it in this fashion. On a picture of time, on a picture of time going from the beginning from the Garden of Eden going all the way through. Let's draw this. Here we have the Garden of Eden. We have a dom is created. We have our first day is the first Rosh Hashanah, the first Tishri one. And we're all heading towards year 6,000. When we get to year 6,000 and we get to Rosh Hashanah, whatever year that is, and I don't know, I have no idea what year we're in. When we get to year 6,000, let's put 6,000 here, the shofar, in, the shofar will blow, the dead and Messiah will rise, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them, and all these events will begin to happen. All the way till the 10th of Tishrei, seven years later, when we have the Day of Atonement, that is the Day of Atonement. And then Yeshua, our Messiah, will return to earth, and we that were caught up alive with him will be coming right back to the earth with him. Now, on this 6,000-year period, here is year 6,000. On this 6,000-year period, we've gone through all of this time, and here we are somewhere down here. Somewhere within the next few years, we'll hit year 6,000. I think it's the plan of God that we don't know exactly what year. I think that the idea is to look at the season and be able to tell the season, be able to look at the earth and see it like a, looking at a woman that's pregnant and be able to tell that it's near at hand, it's going to come soon, but not to know exactly when it is. Now, you might look at a Jewish calendar and you see that the year is 5750. That's what year we're in this, this current year. And it says, okay, 5750, it seems like we're about 250 years away from year 6000. Yet, what you're saying, what I'm saying, is that we're closer than that. That we're within 10 years, 5 years, something along that line. I want to give you a source. And this is a book called Judaism in the first century Christian era. Now it's out of print, but you can find it in the libraries. The author is George Foot Moore. George Foot Moore. Judaism in the first century Christian era. It's in two volumes. If you'll look in volume one and chapter one, 
It will tell you that in the chronicles of the Jewish people where they added up the years, going from the Garden of Eden all the way to the present time, they did not count the years of the Persian kings that were unfavorable to Israel. They only counted the years of the Persian kings that were nice to Israel. In other words, they left out a period of approximately 250 years. So somewhere in here, we are getting close to the end of year, uh, uh, getting to the point of year 6,000. Now notice in our chart above that before we get to Rosh Hashanah, some period before, we actually begin a season of repentance or return called Teshuvah. Brothers and sisters, I believe that that season started in 1967. And I'm going to tell you why in just a few moments. I believe in 1967, we entered the eschatological or the last days period of the 40 days. In other words, let's write 40 days up here. I believe that a generation in the Bible is 40 years, and I believe that these 40 days represent the last 40 years before Messiah comes. Now, I don't believe that it has to be exactly 40 years, but a generation. Right here, I believe in 1967, we entered this period. Now, let me tell you what happens each day during the season of Teshuva. Each day, we're going to have Psalm 27 is going to be read. Let's open there for just a moment. In Psalm 27, starts off a Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, now remember in the past few weeks, we've seen that the time of trouble is a synonym for the seven-year tribulation period. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high up on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. And it goes on every day, Psalm 27 is read. Another passage is read, found in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 33. I'm telling you the wrong passage. Just a moment, I'll find the passage that I need. Oh, wait a minute. Ezekiel 33 is correct. Verse 1, Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming up on the land, if he blows the shofar and warns the people. Now, every morning in the synagogue, after they read the Torah, after the Torah reading, they're going to read Psalm 27, Psalm 33, and they're going to blow a shofar. Now, the purpose of the blowing of the shofar is to warn the people to return to God in repentance, to turn from their ways and come back to God. So let's continue reading. When he sees the sword coming up on the land, if he blows the shofar and he warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the shofar and does not take warning if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the shofar, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming, does not blow the shofar, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require 
at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. So what's happening is that God is blowing the shofar right now. He's warning the people. How is he doing this? We're having a move of God where God is sending out his spirit in all of the world. We're having God being manifested in power and strength among the believers. We're having God move among the Jewish people. Since 1967, more Jews have become believers in Yeshua as the Messiah than in the last 2,000 years put together. God is pouring out his spirit, not only in the phys in spiritual, but also in physical things. In Russia, we've seen Glasnost and all that's happening there. In Germany, we've seen the Berlin Wall come down. In Romania, in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, nation after nation after nation, we've had events that have changed dramatically the world. The trumpet, the shofar is being warned and the people are being called to return back to God. I would like for you to go to the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah, or Zephaniah. In chapter 1, we're going to read verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. Zephaniah chapter 1, and we're starting in verse 14. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of shofar and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued. Now notice, here we are right now, we're somewhere here in the time of repentance, and we're in this time before we get to the festival of Rosh Hashanah. We're having the shofar is being blown. We're having the passages that are coming forth, warn the people, tell the people that they would repent, that they would return to me before the coming of this day, before the sword comes upon the land. Let's keep on reading here in Zephaniah chapter 2. Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, before the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness. And how do you seek righteousness? You seek righteousness through faith in Yeshua the Messiah. It's very easy. It's just to believe. Believe that he is the one that is sent forth, that he came into the world without sin, that he came into the world and that he conquered death by conquering sin and that he won back for us all that God had given to us when man had first been created and man had lost when man sinned. Yeshua has won these things. If you believe that in your heart, you believe that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead by the Holy Spirit, then you'll receive the righteousness of God in him. All you seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth who have upheld his justice, seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Brothers and sisters, we're living in one of the most important time periods right now because right here in this time period, wherever we are in this area, we're quickly coming upon the time that the trumpet will blow, the dead will rise. And if you haven't received Yeshua by that time, then you're going in this, into this time that's called the birth pains. I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles, please, to Hosea. And chapter 14, the message that we have in Hosea chapter 14, verse 1, is the theme, is the theme of this whole 40-day period of repentance. It says, O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled 
because of your iniquity. I'd like you to go, please, to the book of Luke. And in the book of Luke, if you will, turn to chapter, chapter 21. And we're going to see passages that deal with the destruction of Jerusalem. Verse 20, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles unto the times that the Gentiles is fulfilled. Hold your hand here in Luke chapter 21 and turn back to Hosea in chapter 6. In Hosea chapter 6, Hosea chapter 6, we're going to look at the first two verses. It says, Come and let us return to the Lord. The us is the Jewish people. And if you notice, in this 6,000-year period, there was a prophecy that the people would be out of Jerusalem into the nations all the way into Jerusalem and return to the Jewish people. Now, this prophecy came forth in the days of Yeshua, and he said that the generation that was alive at that time would see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, surrounded by armies, and then they would be carried away into captivity exactly 40 years to the day from the time that he gave that prophecy, 40 years to the day, the, the Roman soldiers under Titus circled the city of Jerusalem. It was in the week, just about the 12th of Aviv, a couple days before the Passover, when the Romans came and circled the city, and that was exactly 40 years after Yeshua had made that prophecy. And the people were carried away into captivity, and they wandered from nation to nation to nation to nation. So much so had the Jewish people wondered that they had been called the wandering Jew. We have a house plant that you plant one little sprig and it spreads out over the entire yard. We call that plant the wandering Jew. Hosea chapter 6, come and let us return to the Lord, for he is torn, but he will heal us. He is stricken but he will bind us up. We look at Jewish, we look at history, and we see that in nation after nation, wherever the Jewish people have gone, anti-Semitism has risen up, and there has been a persecution that would come against the Jewish people. We had the Spanish Inquisition, we had the pogroms that were in Russia, we had the Holocaust in Germany, 1940s. We can go back in our own generation, we have seen the horrors of the persecution that has fallen upon the Jewish people. And these prophecies have indeed come to pass. Come, let us return to the Lord. See the word return? See the teshuva. Let us return to the Lord, for he is torn, but he will heal us. He is stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. Now, how long is a day? A day is a thousand years, so two days equals two thousand years. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. That third day, brothers and sisters, is the messianic kingdom. We have that just as Yeshua went into the grave for three days, and on the third day he was raised up, so Israel went into the grave in a symbolic way for three days, and on the third day, from the time that Yeshua would come, Israel will be raised back up. On the third day that we may live, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Now let's go back over here to Luke chapter 21. In Luke 21, we were told that the Jewish people would be scattered among the nations. They would wander from nation to nation until, until Jerusalem would be returned back to the Jewish people. And so we've seen this. We've seen that all of these things have come to pass. We see that in the 1880s, God would raise up a man named Theodore Herzl. And Herzl believed that there was only one place that was safe in the world for Jews, and it was the ancient land of Israel. The only problem was that it was controlled and owned by the Turks. It was part of the Ottoman Empire. And Israel had no opportunity to go back to the land. 
In fact, most of the people didn't want to. But God began to work, and one by one, and two by two, and three by three, as we approached that time, Jews began going back to the land of Israel. We were approaching the last days. In 1917, all of a sudden, the, the British gained control of the land of Palestine. Just one month before they gained control, the British had agreed to work for the Jewish people to return back to the land. This was the Balfour Declaration. We had, in 1948, in 1948, Israel became an independent nation. Immediately upon her independence, first time in 2,000 years, immediately she was attacked by the Arab states. And they came in, they came fighting, they came shooting, and the world said there is no way that Israel can survive against all of these mechanized armies, all of these well-equipped armies. The men didn't even have anything but homemade machine guns. But God was in the midst of Israel. In fact, it didn't have that much to do, I believe, with the power of Israel itself. It had to do totally with the power of God who came in and established Israel. The city of Jerusalem was controlled by the Arabs, except for a small sector that was held out by Jewish defenders within the city. A relief column was marching towards the city. If they could reach the city, then that would be part of what they would have. All of a sudden, the war had turned, and Israel was on the offensive. Israel was winning the war, and miracle of miracles, it looked like Jerusalem would fall, all of Jerusalem would fall into the hands of the Jewish people. But all of a sudden, as they got halfway through the city, the United Nations called a ceasefire. And so at the end of the War of Independence, Half of the city of Jerusalem was in the hands of Israel, and the other half was in the hands of Jordan. The half that was there in the hands of Jordan was the part that contained the temple, and the part that a lot of these prophecies had to deal with. Now, Yeshua will make a statement. He says, verse 24, And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now, I'd like for you to go down, please, to verse 29. In fact, let's, let's look at verse 27. We'll pick up there. It says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, this is the second coming of Yeshua. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. And he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree. Hosea chapter 9, verse 10, the fig tree is Israel. Joel chapter 2, verse 21, the fig tree is Israel. If you'll remember this same week, this same week, in fact, just a couple days before this, two days before this, Yeshua was coming into the town. He saw a fig tree. He went to the fig tree, expected to find figs on it, but there were no figs. But it says that the tree was in full leaf. He cursed the fig because it didn't have figs. However, it tells us that it wasn't yet time for the figs. He cursed the fig tree because it had no figs, and then the next day they come back and the fig tree is withered, and then Yeshua says in the next day, learn the parable of the fig tree. Well, what was the whole symbolic meaning of the fig tree being withered? The fig tree was Israel. Yeshua is the Messiah. Israel, as a nation, corporately should have received Yeshua as the Messiah. The scriptures, the prophets, the ceremonies, all of these things should have meant that the entire nation should have received Yeshua as the Messiah. One out of every six Jews in the first century did receive Yeshua as the Messiah, but it was not enough. And so the fig tree was cursed and it was withered. But God will bring forth the fig tree once again. Verse 29, he spoke to them a parable, look at the fig tree. And all the trees, not only Israel, but all the nations, when they are already budding, in other words, putting out new shoots, putting out figs, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you likewise, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Uh, surely I say to you, this generation, now remember that a generation in the Bible is 40 years. This generation will by no means pass away till all things are fulfilled. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Do you remember that at the passages right before this, verse 27 and 28, Yeshua had said that the Son of Man would be seen coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is literally the second coming of the Messiah. I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm trying to establish for you why I believe this. I believe the 40 days of the season of Teshuvah, the season of repentance, are a picture of the 40 years of the last generation. That Yeshua the Messiah, His coming will end that generation. I believe that that generation began in 1967 where Jerusalem returned back to the Jewish people, in particular that the Temple Mount returned back to the people. So what we have is that there is a message going out to us across the world by world events, a message that's going out spiritually, a message that we need to hear today. God is blowing a shofar. God is warning the people a sword is coming upon the land. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to look at Yeshua and realize that Yeshua is the Messiah. And it's the day that you cry out to Him, come to Him, and receive your salvation. Shalom, and God bless you.